Hi everyone, Budget Stark here. Thanks again for tuning in. Today's video is going to be on the Mark 25 Striker, the construction suits that some people call shovel hands because he's got these pneumatic hammers. In this video, I'm actually going to cover quite a lot of stuff because there is a lot of interesting bits of information regarding this Mark 25. Um, obviously, I'll show you the overall look of this figure, front and back. Also, some warnings and some things that Secret Base will tell you that I'm not sure if Sideshow or other retailers will tell you, but it's in the instructions booklets um, to make sure I'll cover that. Um, show you how the hammers can come on or off because a lot of people have asked about that. There's a spring loaded little mechanism on that as well that can fire the hammer out um, as if it's going to attack someone. Quick size comparison and a weight comparison as well because this is actually a larger than a standard figure, whether or not it'll fit in your debt off. Um, and also a weight comparison because obviously, compared to this, something to the die car series. And I'll show you some of the impressive articulation and the engineering that's in, that has been involved in this because I'm actually quite impressed by this figure. So I'm going to, let's go firstly show you what it comes with. Not much because there are no accessories essentially. You get the base, standard generic base, standard pole and clamp and the instructions booklet. This is fundamental. You must read this. Really, really important. It will become clear why you need to read this a little bit later on in the video. So I'm going to show you quickly this straight out of the box, a little bit of uh, bending the arms and that's pretty much it. I've put the batteries in. I'll switch the lights off here so you can see how it lights up. The head has got some interesting light up. You get the eyes, obviously, and the bit around the cheeks and the ears light up as well. The cheek and the ear LEDs are not as bright as the eyes. Then moving down, you've got the chest, which it won't show up, but it's got like a little bit of a honeycomb effect. You can't see it because of the reflection. And then you get the hands lighting up on that side there. So let's switch the lights back on. The paint app, I would say, is probably one of the best paint apps that Hot Toys have done so far. It has a weathered effect throughout the whole figure. The weathering and the scuffs and the scratches are absolutely phenomenal. You have to see it to, to see the quality of this. It's absolutely amazing. And I'm not sure if this will show up on the camera. I'm going to try and catch this in the right light. It's not, it's actually has a metallic flex of, I would say, purple or a bluey tinge to it. I'm not sure how they've done it, but it's, it's like a three tone color. So you get this little browny look. And then you get the lighter brown. And then you've got this flex of almost metallic paint about it which is really hard to describe you have to be able to see it in person I'm not even sure this will show up on the camera but if I kind of catch it at the right light you might be able to see that reflection there but yeah really impressive um, I love this sleek bulky look the bulky look is almost similar to something like the I'll say like a war machine size wise it's a bit like the red snapper and you'll see how that compares but still it has a modern feel to it yes it's for construction so it's a heavy duty type of armor but the way that it has been designed and engineered is absolutely phenomenal so warnings let's go with areas of potential paint rub this section here very possibly paint rub secret base worn about here at the top make sure this is this is on a spring loaded like a mechanism here like that so make sure that when you're pivoting the arm be careful of that section rubbing against the sort of chest plates going down a little bit more these arms are spring loaded as well you can see that move so when you bend it, make sure you pull this down and then bend the arm. Otherwise, it will rub off on the sort of bicep section there. And on the bottom as well, 
has a similar spring loaded section. So those two bits, be careful of paint rub there. Moving down a bit more, these two sections where the hip is on the legs, that can lift up. I'm gonna go into a cut now and explain a little bit more about that. So I picked the figure out out of the box before doing this video and I started moving around, just having a look to see if there's anything interesting, uh, anything that I think you guys should be aware of. But the moment I lifted out of the box, I noticed that this flap, it was, it was loose. So I thought, ah, oh, what Hot Toys have done to increase articulation in the leg so you can lift higher and get it in more a few more dynamic poses just like they did in the die cast series like the uh, war machine age of ultron the mark 42 and the 43 they've made this hip section move upwards and i think this is one of the first ones in a plastic figure that they've increased the articulation with this this wasn't on the heartbreaker this wasn't on the midas this isn't on the silver centurion so i think or the star boost actually so all of this is a brand new feature on this plastic uh, figure so by this time i hadn't read the instructions because this, i just got it literally straight out of the box so then i tried on this side and i put too much force and this piece of plastic went flying ping and flew that way so just to show you this is a perfect example of why you need to read the instructions before playing about with the figure. I mean, there's nothing major at all. Just put a little bit of glue on the end there, stick it back on and it'll be fine. So, word of warning, always read the instructions. Always read the instructions because this is a highly engineered and designed figure. And you can see, they probably maybe use slightly weak glue or not enough glue. But if you look at it, you're looking at a probably one square centimeter of glue maybe a little bit less even of which you're putting force on that little bit of plastic there like that so obviously you need to be careful on how you manipulate and pose up these figures so i'm going to glue this down and uh, it'll be back to normal really so that's what i make want to make sure that you guys are aware of always read the instructions and be careful with the figure So I used a precision nozzle super glue, um, or if you've got just normal super glue or the gel, I use um, either a toothpick or something like a paper clip because it's quite a small area. And literally spent less than five minutes to glue it back on and it's perfect. Back the same as usual, um, as if it's brand new. So it's done its job and no problems with it at all now. Simple as that. Now you see why you need to read the instructions manual. Um, in that last little section, I mentioned about the Heartbreaker not having these little plastic lift-up sections. I've just checked and the Heartbreaker does have a smaller lift-up section here and here. So correction there, I made a little mistake about the Heartbreaker, but everything else doesn't have those flaps. So the next section working down is to be wary of this ankle section here because this is a flap that lifts upwards the first time i saw that i'm thinking why does it need to lift up that high and you will see why a little bit later on this ankle or the foot should i say can pivot up to here which is absolutely amazing to get in certain poses and i'll show you a little bit more of the articulation um, that you need to be aware of when you're messing about with it but i'll show you that a little bit later on so I'm going to go into the hammers, spring-loaded sections, and then a size comparison. So let's go into a cut now and take this apart a little bit. Okay, I'm going to show you a few parts of the figure working from the feet downwards. The articulation on this is the bit that's so impressive. For some reason, they made this look at the foot can fold all the way like that. So I think if you get him in a certain position or a pose, you want to get his foot to stand in that. Um, that's impressive. This part does not move. This bottom section here is fixed. So that's the part that can move. And then moving up to the knee. Now this is very 
impressive engineering. If I bring this up so you can see it. And it keeps going and going. You've got, I'm not sure that's a double bend or if it's a triple bend, whatever you want to call it, but that's a lot of bends in a knee. So you can literally get it to touch all the way to the back. And if you look at the mechanism, how it closes up, that is great engineering by Hot Toys there to make that. I, I'm quite impressed. I mentioned about the hips, you guys know about now, um, and the legs drop down a little bit, you literally pull it down. Be careful of the joints, they're quite stiff. In my one it's stiff, I'm not sure if everyone is getting those joints there, so make sure you wear them in a, a little bit. Um, this section, the ab section, lifts upwards and extends and does a proper full twist there. And be wary of these sections here that I was telling you about. Let me. These are the spring-loaded sections that move, so make sure you lift this up before bending the elbow so it doesn't dig into the bicep. The top one is the one you need to be more careful of. But this rotates um, on that joint, and this is how you take it off. You can take the pneumatic hammer off. There's a little catch here, and you put pressure on the top and just pull it out like that. And if you want to put it back in, it just clips onto these two little tabs here. But I'm going to show you, with the help of this little mini assistant, how this little pneumatic hammer is spring-loaded. So there's a little button here that you press. You push this in. Obviously, you put this on the figure. And then you press here to fire it. Like that. And it's quite powerful. You can just see him. Oh, there he's gone. So yeah, it's quite a powerful little mechanism, like so. So that's how that hammer works there. And when you do take the hammer off, you are left with this section of the arm. It's still very chunky. This arm section is very, very large. It's, um, I think it's very fitting for this suit. It's a good size. And these plates, these armor plates, cannot come off, so don't try and force them off. If you like customizing and modding, I'm sure you will be able to take them off because they look like they're glued in. And that's how it looks from that side there. Nice range of motion, you've got a 90 degree bend, which is pretty impressive for something this bulky. If you look back on something like the Power Pose uh, Red Snapper, this didn't have that type of articulation. And the War Machine 1.0, um, that's this sort of size. Th those never had this type of flexibility. So good job on developing that. Something else, these are spring-loaded, as I've said. And the shoulder section can come straight out. Let me just show you here. can come straight out. Just give it a little bit of force, not too much. And that comes straight out. It's not like the Star Boost, which it comes out at an angle. So this comes straight out outwards to give you a bit more bend um, and more options for posing so just be aware like I have just done there you can catch the flap on the arm so be careful of this section here because you will get paint rub if you over extend and it gets caught in there just like that so make sure you lift it up and outwards like that so and just push that in there and it gives you a really nice let me show you like that. M much more flush look and not so um, elongated. I've seen some shoulder of the Mark 42 that looks elongated and there's a big gap here. But when you push the uh, cylinders into the shoulder, it looks very nice, clean, overall good look there. So that's all I want to show you on this part. Let's do a couple of weight and size comparisons and that's pretty much it. So let's check out the weight of these figures. We're going to start off with the Midas, the Mark 21. Put that on. You can see it's just under 360 grams. Let's move on to the Striker Mark 25. You can see that it's 640 grams, so we're moving up in weight. 
something a rough size equivalent is the red snapper and he's slightly heavier at 664 and then let's check out a die cast we're putting on a mark 42 and the weight of that is 846 so you can see that it's size wise similar to a red snapper weight wise a little bit less and considerably more than a regular armor like the mark 7 or the mark 21 mida stuff like that okay we're going to be checking out a height comparison how this fares to other armors so we've got the midas there the strike in the center and the red snapper and it's pretty much identical in height to the red snapper which is around 13 and a half inches and i'll just show you that here around the 13 and a half inch mark for both the snapper and the striker mark 25 and width wise you can see it's quite sizable because of the pneumatic hammers and the pose options you can put him in he's going to take up a large portion of a display now i'm going to also add in the base now to show you the height of that because most people will be using a base and putting him in a debt off so i'm going to show you the height of that which means he's coming up to around 15 and a half inches in height hopefully you can see that and i believe the debt offs are around 16 inches so that would work in a debt off that's actually pretty much all i want to show you guys in this video hope you liked it and found it useful if you do pick this up it's a beautifully designed engineered painted articulated figure i think you'll enjoy it if you do pick it up i would say it's more for hardcore iron man fans because he's only featured in the iron man 3 film for five seconds ten seconds or so of screen time but nonetheless i can see a lot of customizers using the body because there'll be some other armors potentially coming up as exclusives that weren't seen much in the film but they use a similar body with a couple of tweaks and tweaks to the arms etc i can see some people maybe using the body for a war machine a custom job the paint app is excellent it's probably as i've said before one of the best paint apps that hot toys have done intricate detail all over so very impressive that's it Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you all at the next video.